office of Fincor, and today I will be talking about uh, Hazelcast. Um, actually, easy scaling with Hazelcast. Uh, uh, idea is to, to to make three sections. Uh, one is about scaling general story, and uh, second will be uh, about Hazelcast technical details. And hopefully, at the end, we can we will see. Um, we will see some examples, and I'm not sure about simulator because I had difficulties with network. There's a, a low bandwidth in, 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 in of a involved, and uh, I'm not sure if I can make it. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what's uh, Hazelcast? Hazelcast is in-memory data grid, and uh, behind that uh, name um, is uh, kind of. I had a really, a really. Uh, tough times looking for a proper definition formal. Uh, uh, most of them were informal or, or, the, the, or description-like. Uh, uh, the one that I like the most is from uh, Oracle. And uh, they say, uh, in-memory data grid is data management system for application objects that are shared across multiple servers, require low response time, very high throughput, predictable scalability, continuous availability, information reliability. And, uh, um, it's kind of big and um, it's not really formal, but it points out all important aspects the data grid should have. Um, and under this uh, umbrella, you can place a lot of things that are not exactly data grids, like uh, distributed cache. And uh, if we uh, look at this, the, the, the slide, uh, we split these uh, tools in uh, three number of, in three categories with the number of features they have. And uh, caches are the simplest, uh, simple key value stores. And they uh, basically don't have um, processing power or uh, have a very limited processing power. On the other end uh, uh, of, of uh, in-memory ecosystem, there's, uh, there are in-memory databases. These are, these are fast in-memory uh, tools. They have everything that relation system has, but uh, they store data exclusively in memory and somewhere in between are data grids. Uh, I would like to spend some time on this table but at the end if we find time. Uh, for now it would be just uh, good to note uh, Hazelcast and VolDB as emerging. Uh, so uh, let's imagine um, successful startup, uh, startup app uh, that's became uh, popular among the users and, and now they're testing the limits of our architecture and uh, uh, we're failing to provide the same user experience we had uh, when we had uh, 100 users uh, as a base. So what are the obstacles at, at, at uh, our road to, to distributed system? Now, there are three key resources that we, that we may lack. Uh, First one, and probably uh, first one will be uh, memory. In uh, since our app is written in Java, we have additional additional problem that is uh, uh, garbage collection, and the other two are CPU processing power and uh, network uh, uh, network traffic. Uh, so this is example of of app that has been running for 24 hours. Uh, it's a simple simple. <laughs> Uh, web uh, web app basically just um, uh, just health service and nothing more. Um, roughly around one minute, uh, roughly uh, minor GC events occur and they last for uh, less than 50 milliseconds and that's acceptable. That's really acceptable. Uh, the problem are major events that occur roughly uh, in one hour and they are. Uh, eight seconds long. This is uh, bad, very bad. And there's one outlier of uh, 19, 18, uh, 18 seconds. It's probably due to uh, heap defragmentation. Nah. So uh, uh, how can we solve this? Uh, well, there are a few uh, popular approaches. Uh, one of them is to move the data out of uh, far from heap to place it into direct memory. And uh, uh, <clears throat> in this way, I know that uh, I think um, um, oh, I forgot the product name. A chronicle map. I think they they run for a whole day, 
I, I've read some, they run for a whole day without a single major, uh, minor GC event. Uh, but eventually we will, uh, we will still have uh, stop the world events and eventually we will hit the wall, uh, memory wall. Uh, other approaches to use uh, Azul's, uh, Zing uh, and, um, and Zulu runtimes, they have uh, patented the C4 garbage collection that is uh, doing this, doing collection in background continuously without, uh, without stopping. And this go hand in hand with, with Hazelcast oftenly. Uh, so uh, uh, what we do at, at Fincor, uh, we move the state uh, out of the service. We made services stateless and uh, we are keeping the data, data in, uh, in data grid. This, this may be like a bad trade because we traded a few, we, we traded direct, direct uh, memory access for a few network hops. And, um, and um, if we keep these network hops low, it doesn't have to be that bad. Um, there are, on the other hand, a number of benefits uh, for using this kind of setup, uh, like um, um, elastic scalability. Stateless services can be um, easily tuned to support the user needs. Uh, like if there is a sudden surge of users, you just turn the volume up and, um, and um, number of instances uh, increase and when users are gone you turn the volume down and uh, you save the money. Uh, that's the idea. And also you have the um, high availability. You can lose five instances and uh, restart them and system will behave like nothing happened. It won't fail, there will be some latencies but uh, he'll stay alive. That's, that's what's good. And uh, there are also a number of benefits of moving the state to a data grid. Uh, you don't push uh, too much pressure on database. Uh, at Fincor, we divide uh, data into three sets, three sets uh, distinctive by importance they have. Some of uh, data is crucial, and this is uh, master data, and they're written once and changed uh, maybe in a year or two. And they are always served from, from data grid. They have high read to write ratio and it doesn't make sense to, to, to put that pressure on, on database. Uh, there are classical data, data that needs to make a trail like financial transactions and, and, and other things and this is handled by database. Uh, this is because, and also some of the logic is put into the database because important uh, data is in database and important logic is tied uh, uh, with important data and therefore should be in database. Uh, and we called it, the last of them uh, are loose data. We call them because uh, we can afford to lose them. They don't have to make a trail. So if you see the price now and on turn your back and, and uh, look it again, it doesn't matter if price changed a lot. There, you've been notified. So this kind of data, most of the data is stored in data grid. And uh, of course, the most important aspect of, of it all is the price. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure if, can, can you see this? Uh, these, are, um, these are eight chip boxes. At the top, there are eight chip boxes with a single core. Uh, and they cost uh, $76. Uh, and the bottom, there is uh, one eight core box and it costs 368. It is a five fold um, price increment. This is a big, big difference. And what's interesting that these eight cores uh, can behave like independent one. Uh, they have one bus and they need to synchronize among themselves. Uh, problem with that approach is that they will behave less perform then eight cores alone. So it's better you will be, if you go for the uh, premium version, you will paying a big bucks for uh, less performance. That's that's interesting point. Um, well, I've pointed here two services, two services boxes. 
this is actually introduction to microservices architecture. I'm not sure if you, uh, I mean, you probably heard of it. Uh, does anybody work on this kind of things today here? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, this will probably uh, be standard in following years. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of uh, uh, books written in, in recent period on, on this subject. Uh, so we achieved high availability for, for services. We can lose like five of services and spawn, spawn restore uh, five and the uh, system will stay alive. But what happens, what's, the system is, is, is very resilient uh, if you think uh, in a context of services, but if you check uh, context of, of state, uh, uh, you see that, um, that preserving a state and providing such uh, high requirements is very hard to do uh, because if you have a memory entry, if you have entry in memory only and uh, you didn't make a backup, uh, in a moment your, your, your box fails, you lose it for good. That's, that's, that, that's the problem. And uh, what the guys in, 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 in Hazelcast uh, did, they've, um, they've used, actually they, they wanted to keep things simple. Like Redis uh, is super fast, it probably better performance, uh, has better performance than, 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 than Hazelcast but it's tricky to set up and there are notions of master nodes and, and, uh, and backup nodes and everything like that. And uh, in Hazelcast, you don't have to think about which node you are at and, and uh, every node is the same. Um, every node is responsible for a piece of data and he delegates his backups, he gives his backups to all other nodes. He takes his partition slice it up and share among the other nodes. And data is colored blue in, in the upper table. This is the healthy state where all four, all four nodes are alive. Uh, <clears throat> the backups are marked in uh, yellow and the two rows over here are empty. They are empty because uh, in a case of failure, uh, rearrangement will, uh, in a case of failure, system will be able to restore the data. Uh, the backups will be promoted to data, but in new state, he will have to um, populate additional space in order to, to, to make a backups. So amount of memory in the, amount total memory in the information and memory in, in, in upper state and, uh, and um, hazard state are the same all this, this uh, amount of memory here and, and up is the same. And this, uh, this save us exclusively from a failure of a single node. Uh, we can't do like in services, we can't do uh, to restore the valid state after uh, half of the boxes failed. That's, that's a hard thing to do. Uh, so this was kind of general story about scaling and, and now it's, uh, more about uh, Hazelcast. Um, how does Hazelcast um, um, operate? Actually, only the first line is needed to create one instance, or one to transform one application into a uh, Hazelcast node. Uh, the other two were, are, are creating a map and putting, putting a value in it. Um, it's kind of silly to use Java as memory store because uh, Java is memory greedy. Um, 32 bits of information for, for, for integer is uh, actually preserved in 28 bits uh, of memory. And um, <coughs> saving complex objects in this way in, 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 uh, in Hazelcast will be very inefficient. That's why um, objects are serialized and stored by default. If you create a complex object, he will be uh, serialized in a in, in number of ways, but serial world, serialized, um, serialized form will be kept. And that's beneficial when you have lots of puts and gets because 
you're really interested in a serialized info um, because you will have to serialize it when you send it to the network. So uh, put and get will deal, doesn't care about the objects. He, he cares only about serialized data and picks it up and, and streams it to, to the network. Of course, that's, that's, that's bad in a case of processing. And we at FinCore, we use processing uh, excessively. Um, <clears throat> in that case, it's beneficial to to keep your data in object form because you don't have to deserialize them. Uh, of course, there's a mix of two worlds. It is a uh, cache, objects are serialized, but if they're frequently used, they are kept uh, in cache uh, as objects. So, uh, well, there are a number of other features that they provide. Um, of course, every, today everybody offers transactions, and transactions are an important aspect of, of today's programming. Uh, but also, uh, various kinds of locks are, are, are in play, and, uh, and uh, these are the ones that they provide out of the box. And you see that the names and interfaces are all the same, like in classic Java, Java uh, applications. One only thing that's maybe different is I condition, and that's basically um, uh, Java notify operation on locks, so you can release the locks in a case of in a case of uh, emergency or or whatever. Uh, so of course there are distributed objects. Uh, uh, to me, the top one are most interesting, uh, but there are uh, lists and sets also, and sets are kind of crippled because because you can't they are stored in, as as um, serialized and you can uh, you don't have guarantee that serialized form will be restored as in a sorted way uh, that's a big plus for redis and big minus for hazelcast but they say they will do it they will do it in future versions and of course imap is most important object in 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 in, in hazelcast um, and therefore it has the most uh, features uh, like you can you have partition control. You can say where will you place which case when entry is based on case. And that's very important if you are processing two maps and you want to, to closely related um, entries to process in the, same, in the same node. You don't want to make a network hops to ask a different, different node what's the value of this key. Uh, there is also a way how to, to, to apply a near cache on, 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 on the map. So if you're frequently using uh, entries from, from a foreign node, uh, th these will be placed in near cache and therefore uh, uh, promptly processed. Uh, you can search, uh, because you have backups from other nodes, you can search among the backups. and. Uh, if, you had, uh, if you have a big map, uh, it's natural to supply it with a good caching algorithm like uh, last recently used or least frequently used. Uh, also, we have uh, pessimistic locking and optimistic locking. Uh, pessimistic locking is a classical locking when you uh, uh, lock resource, uh, read it, uh, alter it, write it, and release a lock, and that's a four Th these are the four um, network hops, and uh, you can halve that number of hops by using optimistic lo locking. Actually, you send old and new value to Hazelcast, and Hazelcast will check the old value with the current situation. If it is okay, it will apply a new value. If not, it will return you a uh, response, and you will be you will be obliged to. Uh, try it again or or um, cancel transaction. So that's it about the data. And this is processing. This is basically something that is that is uh, making all the difference between data grids and 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 uh, distributed caches. Um, so we have a huge data store. Uh, some of uh, 
uh, that uh, needs to be processed and you don't want to make constant look, uh, uh, lookups uh, and make uh, unnecessary network traffic. Now, what you can do, uh, you can send the logic to the data and filter, filter entries that you need. And uh, basically what we have is data store that has uh, Java for DSL. We don't have SQL, we have, uh, we have Java. And there are a number of ways how to do it. Uh, entry processor is for small, for, for small talks, tasks on entries. Uh, mar mar uh, map interceptor and entry listener are, are, are uh, basic support for, for aspect uh, programming. Uh, interceptor is uh, before operation was done and uh, we, we, we is executed before operation, uh, before crude operation is, is uh, uh, executed and uh, listener is, uh, is um, started upon uh, event uh, after, after, after crude operation. And the most important of them all is uh, executor service. Executive service is um, basically executive service in Java 1.5 made a big impact on how we deal with threads and everything. And so did the executive service in, in, um, in uh, Hazelcast. Uh, it's a way how to stream your jobs directly into grid and you will get uh, fast uh, responses with very low latency and you will save network traffic. Uh, of course, there are popular um, ways how to deal with it. You can do it synchronously or as synchronously or asynchronously um, uh, with futures or callbacks. And this is uh, about processing. So uh, maybe I'll put, uh, I did it. Uh, I was scared if I had the time for, for all things, but I was I'm a, a head, a ahead of it. So we'll have uh, more time to, to deal with, with, uh, with examples. So what they did, a nice thing that, that uh, Hazelcast guys did is to uh, make public their stress testing tool called Hazelcast Simulator. Um, this is a very um, um, basically for every feature they have, they have uh, automated tests uh, to cover it. Unfortunately, the network uh, bandwidth here available for me is uh, not suitable to run them all. Uh, I would like you to sh I would like I would like to show you um, first few of my examples that uh, basically show how 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 um, Hazelcast. Uh, how resilient is Hazelcast? Uh, so, uh, in the upper block, I'm going to create two, two nodes. Uh, and I will show how data survive uh, hazard. Um, these are the really simple, I will show you also the source code, but implementation quite simple. There's uh, just one instance of Hazelcast and a few, few REPL uh, commands that can be executed. Well, Hazelcast uh, uses um, uh, multicast address to detect nodes in, in, in uh, uh, subnet. Uh, so they have ability to sniff out each other and they can automatically uh, create a cluster. Um, <coughs> with a little bit of gluco glue code, you can make them truly elastic. Uh, they don't have ability to scale let's say Amazon services uh, to make a space for, um, for uh, growing uh, data. You have to deal with it yourself. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, if you have a network, they can easily attach uh, to each other and uh, uh, make all agreement they need to do. Uh, so I will place
Well, what I did, these are two different processes. Uh, in the left one, I've uh, uh, placed uh, uh, value one in uh, entry with uh, key one and value one. And in the right, I've uh, read the uh, uh, value for key one. And I can also do that for, for um, map in the uh, right, right, right side of, of the screen. So what happened if I close one of the boxes? The other will be notified and he will promote his backups to masters and all, all entries will be saved. So entries entered in, 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 uh, in right, right node were able to retrieve from from the uh, left node. And also, let's try to restore the, the, the healthy state again. And now again, we have, um, we have two nodes. Uh, during these um, uh, connections and, and, and uh, distributing of data, our system is highly vulnerable. Um, lots of data are not backed at this moment, and if you lose another instance, you are lose, you lose the data for good. And now <clears throat> we are free to kill uh, the left one, and in the right we can we can see that the map survived. So this is the value that was entered in, in, in the first one. So that's a high availability in a context of state. And this is, this is OK, but it's not what, uh, what uh, we can do with, with services. And of course, I said that we, have, um, we, made, we made the bad trade. We traded direct, uh, direct um, uh, memory access for network crops. And what happened uh, is that um, uh, we were having um, uh, performance issues because we were constantly asking for, for, um, for uh, data that was provided in one list. And instead of simple request and response, we had uh, uh, hundreds or almost thousands of, of, of uh, additional hops. That really makes no sense. And um, because of that, we twisted our uh, gets for, um, for uh, processors. Actually, we send the logic to a data grid, and um, <clears throat> we will send a request, and we will receive a response. And that's all of the network traffic we will be involved for, for, for this, this uh, kind of. So this is a trivial example. Uh, we can see that uh, processing lasted for six, uh, 168 milliseconds. And this is quite a lot of time. This also involved 100 uh, requests from, from data grid. Um, what can we do to, to uh, make this more efficient? Um, so 
So this is the logic uh, of, of service, uh, nothing more. Uh, uh, what we are measuring here is um, we'll take a customer, John, and um, we will pick a list of his orders and we will uh, go through all of them and see what happened. Uh, this is um, this is logic that uh, took 160 milliseconds. This is also a very good result because um, <clears throat> usually when I do, uh, they last for 180, 200 milliseconds. Uh, but at this moment, it went just fine. Uh, <clears throat> what, we, what we can do to improve, to improve, um, is to give up of this whole request and send the logic directly to to read like here. Uh, we exchange the, 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 the gets with, with this single command. This is not a single command because it involves invoice uh, task. Invoice tasks uh, uh, is sent to a, to a central node, then uh, node go to list of orders and the one that are in, um, in, in his responsibility, he will pick them easily like direct memory, access and uh, aggregate them to create a bill. Uh, <clears throat> and that's much better, that's much better solution because uh, we have skipped number of, uh, number of uh, Network hops. Well, we skip number of them, but uh, there is um, also half of them will were the, the, uh, half of them are responsibility of a uh, different node. Uh, so we gave up of half of the network hops, but the other half remained uh, remained uh, in in uh, in play. And uh, order to fix this problem, we need to reorder the keys. We need to provide a key order and to link uh, orders with um, with um, uh, order with, with, with customers. And uh, uh, that's called partition affinity. Uh, data affinity because uh, two sets of data are affin they are uh, semantically close to each other uh, so this should execute much faster than Well, it shouldn't be that. Uh, also, uh, well, uh, the results you get, well, I'll show you uh, on samples. Um, Hazelka simulator, the results you get uh, are usually not. Um, uh, given in a, in, a, in a discrete form rather than uh, in expectancy. So you don't, uh, this is not a valid result. Usually I get 50 and, uh, and 30, between 35 and 50 milliseconds for, for this operation. Uh -huh. I haven't seen this, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's my fault. Uh, probably broken broken this this morning because uh, I had uh, well we can't uh, we can't uh, but eventually uh, this operation with ordered keys last uh, for uh, between 35 and in uh, 50 seconds um, <clears throat> and uh, important thing to know important thing to 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 mention is is uh, Hazelcast simulator. Uh, they provided um, stress testing tool uh, 
on a GitHub so anybody can pick it up, pick it, and uh, can try in his own configuration, uh, whatever it is. Uh, is it Amazon Web Services or uh, Google Compute Engine or your local static uh, uh, data center? Uh, so, I've prepared uh, two boxes in, in Amazon for, for test. Now, the problem with this is it's going to take probably a lot of time because um, uh, it's a network intensive operation. Okay, uh, so this is a setup uh, of, um, of uh, Hazelka Simulator. Hazelka Simulator is actually a collection of tools uh, that uh, instantiate and, and distribute work across uh, data center. And um, at the top uh, is a tool called Coordinator. He's responsible for distributing the workload and um, <coughs> managing the agents. Agents are JVMs inside uh, every box that are responsible for managing uh, Hazelcast instances. And I, when I say Hazelcast instances, I mean in a Hazelcast process, different process. You, have, you can have a few instances in same JVM, but in this case, instance is always independent, uh, independent uh, JVM. Uh, so <coughs> agent is... Um, uh, orchestrating workers, uh, these one are workers, and uh, tests are something like... Um, uh, this. Um. Okay, provisioner is a tool that... provisioner is a tool that... Uh, uh, installs JVMs, install JDK and uh, JVMs and Hazelcast across all the machines. He's, um, he's uh, also responsible for retrieving results from, uh, from workers from all across the cloud. And um, basically we should need that in this order. Um, uh, provisioner clean it will clean the, uh, it will clean the, um, uh, how much time do we have? Like, no time. Oh, basically these are the four steps. Uh, I had, uh, I have, uh, I had the simulator up and running, uh, in a matter of, uh, days, like uh, one or two days it was executing operations I wanted to, to, to hit. And the results, uh, we get are uh, not so easy to 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 understand. You have to uh, analyze them. You get results uh, more like histogram rather than concrete values, and that was it. And we are looking for people constantly. And if you like these uh, kind of things, uh, please uh, join us or drop drop by in Belgrade office. So that's it for me. Uh, and you can contact me at. Uh, um. <laughs> I don't know where, where it's lost. Okay, uh, you can find me on, 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 on LinkedIn or whatever. Uh, anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, please, uh, please uh, get in touch. That's all I have to say. Uh, thank you very much.